Welcome to Carrot Blanca, a tale of double dealings, triple threats, singular courage, and lasting love. Oh, yeah, and it's pretty funny, too. In fact, it's 30% funnier than it was last Thursday. We know because we put each joke to the test with our trusty laugh-o-meter. So, sit back, relax, and read along. And each time you hear Sam's knock, 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 you'll know it's time to turn the page. Off in the desert, in the faraway land of Monaco, there was a burger joint called the Café Olé American, where the food was lousy and the service was even worse. Now outside, it was hotter than a peanut butter and pepper sandwich, so everyone wanted in. And once they were in, they danced and laughed and sang along with a daffy duck named Sam, who tickled the ivories. All right. Hey, folks. Everything was fine and dandy, tip-top, A-OK. -okay. Inspected by number 47 and 48. That is, until a little canary named You Smarty flew into the cafe in a terrible tizzy. He flew right up to the owner of the establishment, a dapper bunny called Bugs. Eh, uh, what's up, Doc? Asked Bugs. Please help me, Mr. Bugs. I need you to hide this very important document. Just then, over the cafe's radio, assembled in Mexico with parts made in Taiwan, came the news. Okay, I say attention! German scientists knocked unconscious by large frying pan. Important documents told him. The tip bugs off all right. You Smarty's little paper was the very same, identical, one-of-a-kind document stolen from the scientist. Bugs eyed the canary and the paper he was waving. Please, Mr. Bugs. Begged you, Smarty. With this document, you'll be helping to make life wonderful in America. But Bugs couldn't care. Not a penny's worth. Not a half a penny's worth. Not a half of a half of a penny's worth. But you, Smarty, persisted and insisted. I need you to get this to a pulley tap. Who will be here tonight with a lovely lady. A dame? Exclaimed Bugs. Give me that paper. Phew, said you, Smarty, letting out a sigh. With Bugs taking care of things, he finally felt safe and secure. But that safe, cozy feeling didn't last long. Because suddenly, General Pandemonium came crashing into the cafe and pulled up next to you smart. Well, I'm the meanest, nastiest, high salutinest soldier in this man's army. And I got word you're the one with that important document, declared Pandemonium. Don't look at me. Squeaked, you smarty. Mr. Swazwell's the cat you're looking for. I think I saw him at the supermarket picking up some milk. Hmm. Must be double coupon day. Mumbled General Pandemonium. And with that, he went searching for Slaslow. While a cat named, you guessed it, Slaslow marched into the cafe. And right behind him was a mysterious, lovely lady. Trying to impress her, Slaslow tipped the maitre d' $50 to get a good table and 50 more to get chairs to go with it. While Slaslow went off to the litter boy's room, 
His date turned to the piano playing duck. It's been a long time, Sam, she said. Sam knew her the second she spoke. It was Kitty, Bug's long lost love. She was trouble with a capital T. Please play my favorite song for me, Sam, pleaded Kitty. Not one to refuse a request, Sam played one note. One itsy bitsy teeny weeny little note. In an instant, Bugs appeared at the piano. I thought I told you never to play that song. He shouted. She made me do it. Cried Sam. It was her, her, her. Bugs whirled round and saw Kitty. Kitty, Kitty. He stuttered. Seeing Kitty again made Bugs remember how the two of them had been in love long, long ago. He remembered all those hugs and kisses and meat loaves they'd shared. They traveled. They laughed. They even bunny hopped at the coconut grove. Then came that rainy day at the Paris train station, when Kitty left Bugs her sad, sad letter that ended it all. Dear Bugs, I cannot go with you. We're different, you and I. Remember, we'll always have Pongo Pongo. Now that particular day was well in the past. But Bugs remembered it like it was yesterday. Well, actually, the day before yesterday. That night, after the cafe had closed, Bugs tried to drown his sorrow in a carrot juice smoothie. Of all the juice joints in all the countries and all the worlds, she picks this one. He said as he gulped down his sweet concoction. He was one sad bunny. Just then. Kitty burst in with a heart-stopping, life-shattering, can't wait a second longer, full-blown emergency. Bugs, please help me! She cried. They've arrested Slaslo. Bugs glared at Kitty and said, "I stick my cotton tail out for no one, especially someone who stole my goil." Kitty began to cry <laughs> softly. <laughs> okay, okay, turn off the waterworks. I'll help you," said Bugs. "Ooh, I'm such a sucker," he added. When Bugs arrived at the police station, General Pandemonium was grilling Slazlo like a Salisbury steak. "How many times do I have to tell you?" shouted Slazlo. "I don't have that document." But the general wasn't buying what Slazlo was selling. Bugs thought fast and hopped into action. "Listen, Sarge," he said to the general. You don't know nothing about interrogating. Let me show you how it's done. With that, he threw Slazlo off the chair and put the general square on the hot seat. Bugs ducked behind the chair and reappeared disguised as a tyke. Pointing at Pandemonium, he cried, "That's him! That's the mean old man who popped my balloon!" <laughs> oh, you brute! Said the mother, who was really Bugs in disguise, number two. You hairbrain harasser! She cried as she、uh, bugs knocked the general out of the picture and out of this book in a single blow. Now, Slazlo said, "Bugs, it's time for you and Kitty to get out of Carrot Blanca. I've booked you both on the first plane out." Slazlo looked at the tickets and ungratefully replied, "What? No first class?" And as if I haven't done enough already," said Bugs. "I've also brought you a little going away present." What was it? It was the top secret,、mm, confidential. Keep your mitts off stolen document. Secret plans for making funny noses and glasses. This is going to make me so filthy rich. I'll have to take a bath every day," cried Slaslo. Before they left, Kitty turned to Bugs and said, "Bugs." I don't know if I can leave you again. Listen," said Bugs. "If you don't go with him, you'll regret it. In this crazy world, the lives of three people don't amount to a..." "Yeah, yeah," interrupted Slazlo. "Hell of greens, hell of greens. We know, we know. Gotta go, gotta go. Say goodbye, dear." Soon after the plane took off, Kitty looked over to see Slazlo wearing a pair of the funny nose and glasses, laughing at himself in his handheld mirror. She realized 
she'd made a big mistake. Knowing that cats always land on their feet, Kitty jumped from the plane, landing square in the middle of Bugs' waiting arms as her parachute flopped down over their heads. So what could Bugs say at a time like this? He's looking for you, kid. They headed off into the evening fog as Sam played Kitty's favorite song. You must remember this A kiss is still a kiss A sigh is just a sigh The fundamental things of life As time goes by And when two lovers woo they still say I love you On that you can rely No matter what the future brings As time goes by No light and love song out of day Hearts full of passion Jealousy and hate 